right, let's begin this way. Today, September the 27th, is World Tourism Day. It is an official day set aside by the United Nations to foster awareness among the international community on the importance of tourism and its social, cultural, political and economic benefits. This year's celebration is themed Tourism for All, promoting universal accessibility and this to emphasize the benefits of universal accessibility in tourism, what it can bring to the society at large. Global Veritable Tool for Economic Stability. It has the capacity to positively re engineer the overall economy of the nation. Consequently, the State Governor, Senator Abiola Ajimobi, as part of the repositioning agenda of Oyo State, has renewed its commitment to the holistic development of the state. Top of the list of that agenda is the transformation of the beautiful landscapes and cultural wealth including the heritage and monuments in Oyo State, they have been embedded into the overall development of the state. Unless we have this infrastructure in place, tourism will not take off. And this is what to me, the key is the PCT. But even while we are waiting for the PCT, we also need capacity building and we lack it. With us in the studio is the Legal State Commissioner for Tourism, a forlorn resort for Larry and Coca. It's good to have you join us this morning. Good morning, my Good morning. Good morning. Good morning All right, sometimes when we talk about tourism, it is always the holidaying that comes to mind and traveling somewhere to spend some time and so on. But if we have to encompass tourism, what really constitutes tourism? Let, let's have a basic understanding so we, we know where to delve into generally. Okay. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, Tourism is principally defined as moving from one location to another okay. to consume something in that new location. So in Lagos, for example, we have a lot of economic tourism. People come to Lagos to do business. But we don't class that as tourism because our focus is generally uh, uh, leisure tourism, which is lying down on the beach somewhere. There's also a lot of religious tourism. A lot of people come to Lagos to worship. If you look at uh, the Redeemed Christian Church of Christ, Napsat, Pastor Paul's uh, experience, people come from far and wide to worship in Lagos. So in our own sub-Saharan context, we are like a Mecca for religion, a Dubai for worship. Um, Lagos is a tourist center by the uh, virtue of the population of Lagos. There are so many people in Lagos between 22 and 24 million. Now, they consume a lot of Lagos. They move from Badagri to Ekbe to Ikorudu to Bar Beach and return to their respective locations to consume whatever bit of Lagos that they want. You also get people who come to Lagos from the various regions of Nigeria. Eko for sure did not just like start from nowhere. People came to Lagos for pure entertainment and returned. So we still have those brands of tourism that exist there within Lagos. Okay, so can you just quickly touch on the impact of tourism on politics? Impact of tourism <laughs> on politics? I, I've never really given that one much thought. However, um, politics controls pretty much all our lives and there are certain things that need to be properly positioned before tourism can thrive. A few weeks ago, um, Lagos was given a label by an international magazine as to its ranking in how great a city it is to live in. If you go to the uh, country advisory sites on, on, on certain countries, you, what is the advice you are given when you want to go to Lagos? Now, those are not very positive things that politics is affecting. Politics can more positively affect those sort of negative conversations about the city to make it easier for people to come into. Politics can positively affect the ease with which you can come into the country and into Lagos. Do you really need a visa when you have, I don't want to mention any country names, but other country visas, mm. that you can collect your visa at destination and, 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 and pretty much walk into Lagos for, for a fixed fee. 
Politics is also what buys the security vehicles for the police. Politics is also what fixes the roads so that the yeah. roads are more trouble that's, that's for you. That's the point, really, to, because uh, the so, Minister of uh, Culture actually said that basically for what was given for tourism this year in, on the, Niger, in the Nigerian budget was nothing really to write home about, but that the government would provide the enabling environment for tourism to try, talking about infrastructure, talking about electricity. And, and, and things like that. That's the, that's where we're going. Yes. Yeah, uh, um, yes. I took a broader context. Um, every investment yeah. in infrastructure mm. to make the lives of the citizens of Lagos better is an investment that supports tourism, because we live here, yeah. we work here. So every if, if the roads are better, security is better. It simply means that our lives are better. Mm. If our lives are better and we are enjoying this magnificent city of ours. It makes it easier for somebody from Ibadan to come yeah. or somebody from New York to come here because the quality of life that we are living is something they want to experience. Now, um, tourism development takes, there are many routes and there's no particular route that is prescribed that it is our destiny. I believe we're going to chart our own way. Now, we don't have to experience. Now, um, tourism development takes, there are many routes and there's no particular route that is prescribed that it is our destiny. I believe we're going to chart our own way. Now, we don't have a national carrier. We have some infrastructural problems. We cannot do the Dubai style of tourism, but people do come and shop here. We cannot do the Jerusalem or Saudi uh, Mecca style of tourism, but people do come here to worship. We are not Ibiza, which is the party capital of Europe, but people do come to Lagos to party. So, if we take a hybrid of all, mm. we give enough people enough reason to come to Lagos. And I think one of the things we need to do a bit more of is inform both the people in Lagos and the people outside Lagos and outside Nigeria about what there is to do in Lagos, taking it simply in a clean, digestible form into the digital space where it's easy to consume. Mm. All right, now if we look at projections, even the United Nations usually, they have production, we, we, we've, we had the MDGs, we now have the SDGs, tourism is, is, is part of all of this where life is made better for people and all of that. If we narrow it down to Nigeria and we're looking at projections, what are those ideals that we look forward to to say, okay, in the next two, three years, in the next five years, we should be achieving this kind of level of tourism as the case may be or we should be able to attract this number of people or we should, we should be able to attract this amount of money or something mike stop. yes <laughs> <laughs> okay. do we have ideals yes we do okay you see um there's something called self-love mm. you've got to love yourself to a particular point before you expect somebody else to share that love let us start to consume more of our own what we have what is here let us stop this I've just made $2,000, I've got to go to Dubai. No. How about spending $500 here and saving the rest? How about consuming a lot more of Lagos? How about consuming a lot more of Nigeria? How about growing your Naira? By Look at the state of the global economy. Look at the state of our, our own economy. It's not about leaving with it out there anymore. It's about bringing it in. Now, um, our focus is community tourism. It's about us using what we have better within our limits. If we consume enough of Lagos, enough of Ibadan, uh, 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 Ekiti, Abuja will come to Lagos. In consuming more of Lagos, you push through the revenues through the establishments. Those establishments strengthen and grow. The regulatory authorities strengthen and grow from taking the taxes. It is only then you can now start to look at, you know, the broader spectrum. Look, the Germans bought so much Mercedes-Benz that Mercedes-Benz became a German national car. Then the Europeans bought it. Then the Americans bought it. Then it became a global brand. If you look at every one of, from fashion to cars, you name it, the people of the country where it originated from believed in it, the government supported it, it grew. I believe that is the modular way All in right. which tourism must grow. Mm.
Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that. Now, to, let's give you this information in how tourism has to do with a network of activities of persons who travel to and stay at destinations outside the normal places of residence and work for pleasure, business and other purposes. Uh, the Commissioner uh, gave us a background to that yeah. earlier on. On the one hand, visitors benefit from what uh, the selected destination has to offer in terms of product and service delivery, while the host, on the other hand, benefit from the income generated from the services provided to meet the needs of the visitors. Some reasons for tourism may include, but not limited to, leisure, recreation, pilgrimage, medical treatment, cultural exchange, sporting events, conferences, and events, of course, studies, among others. Mm. Now, the tourism industry is large and accommodates other sectors, such as transportation, for example. A tourist may come by air, land, or water. He may use car rental services or tour companies. Now, the hospitality industry that provides hotels, restaurants, Another is the provision of support services for tourists, for instance, shopping facilities, service stations, duty-free stores, and other sector for those who build standard facilities. In 2015, there were 1.186 billion international tourist arrivals worldwide, over 56 million international tourist arrivals were to Africa. Let's focus on Nigeria. Nigeria is blessed with many tourist attractions that can, in return, uh, offer benefits that include revenue generation in view of falling oil price, employment and repositioning of the country's image internationally. Some of the tourist attractions in Nigeria are beaches, waterfalls, zoological gardens and amusement parks, natural springs, rock formations, hills and highlands, caves and tunnels, uh, resorts, uh, museums, festivals, arts and crafts among others. Now, on the, uh, on the in 2015, WTO, WTO rankings in that year, Nigeria is not in the top 10 travel destinations in Africa. But countries that lead the pack are Morocco, South Africa, Tunisia, Algeria, Mozambique, Zimbabwe, Kenya, Uganda, Namibia and Egypt. Now, according to data from the International Monetary Fund, Nigeria's tourism revenues were equivalent to just 0.1% of its gross domestic product in 2015, compared with 2.3% in Ghana, 3.8% in Rwanda, and 6.2% in Madagascar. Mm, after agriculture, tourism is the second largest source of foreign exchange revenue in Kenya. Tourism contributes about 25% of the gross domestic product, that's the GDP of that country, about 70% of Kenya's tourism revenue come from wildlife tourism alone. The case is the same for South Africa. The tourism industry accounts for a substantial amount of the country's revenue. Now, the majority of tourist arrivals are from southern African countries. Domestic tourism contributes 52% of total tourism consumption. Now, the United Nations World Tourism Organization forecasts an unexpected 1.6 billion tourist arrivals worldwide by 2020. Of the estimated tourist arrivals projected for 2020, which will generate billions of foreign exchange, how many? is Nigeria expecting? That's, That's the, the big, big question. question really. no, no, let's, let's <laughs> bring... <laughs> you see, there are projections in there as to, okay, the, the world is going to experience this, there's going to be benefits here and all of that. In all of this summary, I know companies, countries, individuals are going to benefit and, and smile to the banks with all of this and then some with satisfaction in their minds. But in Nigeria, if we, if we take tourism, apart from the medical tourism and the other tourism you talked about, let's talk about the leisure, for instance, because that's the first one that comes to mind when you say tourism. Is Nigeria really ready to explore that aspect of tourism? Yes. Yes, Nigeria is. Yes, Nigeria has been. Okay. One of the problems is data collation. You know, the... Yeah. the, the all the data you uh, have just reeled off, I think of it in the context of having been into some of those countries that you're talking about, you know, and I look at the volumes. If you look at a country like Ghana, what's the population of Ghana? It's 25 million, which is just slightly above the population of Lagos. So when, when I look at the percentages and, and the throughput of international tourists going through them, one of the problems we have here is we do not capture enough of that data. 
to be able to actually calculate what I believe are realistic figures as to the numbers of people that have been through here. If we had those numbers, I am sure we will have some impressive figures as to the number of people who come to do business here, the number of people who work here, simply by the volume of the population of Nigeria. I don't believe we should be completely left out of the ranking. But I believe that data will be collected uh, yeah. at least at the airports now. with Because even according to you, the uh, Bureau of Statistics, that, that, that's a problem really, lack of data, accuracy of data, even where they have some scanty ones is not particularly accurate. But in 2011, some, some reports captured some data and in that year, they were able to record about 2 million visitors ranking in Nigeria, which brought in about $3.7 million in 2011. But this year, 2015-2014, is, is really worse. The, the report is not even available. Perhaps that has to do with the security challenges Nigeria is facing? Yes, the security challenges haven't helped. I mean, the, the, the perception of the state of the security in Nigeria is like, you know, I step outside here and there's somebody with an AK-47 you know, waiting to do some harm to me. What you and I know is not the reality in, 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 in the country. There's an area that we have a problem in and the government is dealing with the problem within that area. Occasionally we have some attacks sporadically around the country. It is difficult for you to encourage people to come into a zone where they don't feel safe. If people feel safe within, I mean, the, the image is that that place is safe, they will go there. Their money will follow them there. The investments will also come there. So yes, uh, the, the image of Nigeria and the security problems that we have had, um, I, I, I think we just need to put the, a bit more of the facts into the uh, uh, news domain for people to actually make more informed choices that it isn't really as bad as, as, as it's been made out to be. Yes, it has affected our, our, our numbers, but if you look at the last eight months, we really haven't had the kind of atrocities we were experiencing in, in 2014, 2015. So I believe that with that improvement, a lot more people will see yeah. you know, the value of uh, This Rio Olympics held in, I mean, yeah, held in Rio, where you have the, uh, the Zika virus, the fear of Zika virus became the, <laughs> <laughs> in the beginning of wisdom for so many people, but people went to, to Rio what did they do differently in spite of that challenge? South Africa, if you talk of crime, it is really high out there, but people still go there. I, um, I, I, I hate to say this, but if you look at Lagos, the last five days of 2015, there was no serious crime reported in the city of Lagos. If I look at some European cities and some of the reports we had, I don't know when last somebody went into a school and open fire on little children or into a mall. I don't know when last, I mean, if ever anybody has driven a, a truck through Balogu markets harming people. So when we talk about crime and insecurity, there's just a general phobia and unfairness towards us. South Africa has crime. Yeah. London has crime. Where's the murder capital of the world? It's not in Africa, it's in America. So let's put these things into context. What is the criteria that you use to measure the crime in Lagos that you make it sound as if Lagos is somewhere in the war zones of Aleppo. We, we, we need to readdress that negative perception of Lagos globally. And, and some of the things we, we are trying to do is to create a positive noise and put it in digital space about Lagos. Okay. So some of the uh, 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 festivals that we have had the marathon that we have had. International runners ran 26 plus kilometers around Lagos. Nobody jumped out with an AK-47 at anybody. Nobody was attacked, nobody was injured. We had the one Lagos fiesta at the end of last year, the crossover ceremony, which was 25 concerts in five days. There's no serious crime reported. So please, let, let's try to readdress this negative conversations about Lagos. All right, let's, let's talk about um, infrastructure. Mm. It is common knowledge that Nigeria has a lot of infrastructure deficit as it is. And we know, especially when it comes to transportation, if we narrow it down to Lagos, in fact, where is your jurisdiction? We know that there has been effort by government to put on uh, BRT lanes and, and BRT buses, as the case may be. But you and I know that transport 
movement within Lagos, if you don't have a car, is not very convenient. How does that compound the challenges in the tourism we are talking about? One of the things that tourism entails is movement. Mm -hmm. You must move from A to B. Mm -hmm. You must move from A to B in relative comfort, uh, secure, at a reasonable price. Okay. Transportation in Lagos, because of the density and in relation to the size, 4,000 square kilometers of land, and you have 22 odd million people in that place. When you have so many people packed into one small location, it's, no matter how many roads you have, it's, it's, it, there will be traffic. The management of that traffic is not easy, but government is well on top of it. We've had last mile on top of that. The buses, BRT, the regulation of the motorcycles and the tricycles, the uh, pending introduction of the medium-sized buses. You know, you, you, you can put 20 on the, uh, twenty of the minibuses on the road that will take 10, 15 people. Or you can put some slightly larger ones that will take more people and remove more of those people from the, the, the more of those downfalls from the road. You've also got the intermodal transportation systems, the light rail, the use of water as transportation. It's such a dense city that you've got to employ a basket of transportation modes to get around efficiently. So you may take a bus, you may take a little boat ride, and then you may get onto the light rail which will shortly open. So I think we are not there yet, but we are on our way. I think there have been laudable uh, uh, achievements over the last 10 years in terms of transportation in Lagos. If you look at the investment in roads, I don't know if you remember Adeola or Deku, or you go to a road. I mean, mm -hmm. I, the, the, the before and after photographs, right. I think. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Honorable Commissioner for Culture, Tourism, Lagos State, thank you very much for talking to us today. Thank you very much. Yeah, Adira is lovely. <laughs> Tourism Day. Tourism. <laughs> <laughs> All right, this is where we end this segment right now, but we're going out on TVC Entertainment. The viewers there can continue with the breakfast show on TVC Nigeria, Kansai Channel 190 and DSTV Channel 418. Go TV 45 is TV, it is still 510. Let's continue the conversation there.